welcome to this bonus edition of Strange New Pod. I'm your fleet admiral and host, Julian Brown, alongside the best bridge crew this side of an editing booth. I'm joined tonight by Vice Admiral Eric, Commander Hawk, and of course, Commander MC. It is so good to see you guys. And then also, we have the absolute pleasure tonight of welcoming two very special guests. We have editor John Wesley Witten and assistant editor Matt Capacci from Strange New Worlds. Welcome to the show, guys. Yeah, hey. thank you. Yeah, thanks for having us here. This is awesome. Yes. Uh, well, you know, it's it's like weeks and weeks of planning. I think we, Matt, I think you and I even talked about possibly doing this last year. So it's been a bit. It has, yeah. And especially because I think we were trying to get in for uh, episode three and then yeah. uh, turned to six and then it turned to nine. And it's like, well, let's just do all of them. <laughs> we're just going to talk about all of it. It's going to be great. Um, very quickly, uh, before we get into it and talk with you guys, which we're so excited to do, uh, we have to say, as we have been every week, and we will do every week as the strike goes on, this podcast was recorded during the 2023 WGA and SAG after strikes. And without the labor of the writers and actors currently on strike, the Trek series that we review and talk about and deep dive on this podcast each and every week wouldn't exist. So need to make that known. Support the actors, support the writers. Fuck AI. Let's go. Get them <laughs> what they need. Okay. I appreciate that. Yeah. yeah no. They can't because they can't write these stories. No, 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 no. AI Absolutely cannot not. ever, ever do this. And AI I mean, doesn't have a childhood trauma. <laughs> no. no it does not um so with that said guys just for those that don't know um wes and matt are the editing team right you guys worked on episodes 203 206 and 209 and for those that don't you know follow the episode numbers as closely that's tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow and um i'm gonna completely forget 206 for a second but i'm gonna cut it in editing. <laughs> lost in translation lost in translation, lost in translation. <laughs> yep uh, 206 is lost in translation and then 209 how could you forget it is the musical episode subspace rhapsody all fantastic episodes all the you guys got the threes which is really funny too uh three yeah. six and nine uh <laughs> yeah and you know was, you know what else is really wild about that is we also got all the kirk episodes too which is yeah, awesome. oh my god you did oh yeah <laughs> so funny uh -oh. <laughs> yep. okay all right so there's another fun fact i love that. <laughs> uh not only just the kirk episodes but three episodes that are just wildly different from one another in every way possible um can't wait to talk about them with you guys but before we do that uh, every time we have new guests on that we haven't talked about, we like to ask you guys what your history is with Star Trek, if you were fans before the show. So, Wes, I'm going to start with you. Do you have a history with Trek? Were you a fan growing up? And uh, if you were, tell us about it. So my first entry into the Trek world was actually watching the Trekkies documentary oh, nice. and, and was yeah. introduced to it through that. So seeing all the fans and seeing everything uh, was funny that way. And then I wasn't really privy to any of the shows. Um, I grew up watching the movies, you know, and they'd be on the background and on HBO or whatever, but I didn't have uh, a deep history with the show before coming to it. Um, and in my interviews and stuff, when I started, I think I got the job because I didn't know that much. <laughs> oh, interesting. Okay. I think they were, they were definitely, you know, looking for talents, but not, you know, not knowing, you know, everything. Yeah. Um, so mainly just the movies. Um, and then once I uh, started on disco, I really started learning a lot quickly. <laughs> nice. I didn't. I wasn't aware that you worked on disco. What episodes of disco did you edit? Um, season three, um, I did Forget Me Not, uh, the Trill episode, and Great then episode. Uh, episode seven, uh, Unification Three. <gasps> it's my favorite episode of Discovery. Yeah. <laughs> one. Yep. Uh, if I'm not mistaken was chad rubel your assistant editor on that one or did he not work on unification three with you he did not work on that he one did not. I, I got um, a he, chance to talk he, to him oh cool uh he was an editor on the show on other episodes but okay. i was alongside him on that nice nice he, he awesome. had bumped by that season he had bumped up or whatever so he was that's no right he was an editor on that show that's right yep yeah, yeah he's a great guy absolutely yeah. love chad um no that's awesome i didn't know you worked on disco that's that's interesting that you mentioned that they were maybe looking for people that weren't familiar with the show because like i feel like you know as fans 
if you were to come onto a show like Strange New World, you'd want everything to like be perfect, and that might be a little bit of a detriment. So I don't know. That that's a really cool fact. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, it 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 was it was funny in my interview. It was like uh, I actually don't know. I thought I just thought I was bombing, and at the end of it, it was like <laughs> you're great. <laughs> you know. Oh, that's <laughs> awesome. That's awesome. Um, Matt. You and I, however, you and I have become very fast friends. Uh, so I, I know your Trek background pretty well. Um, but for our viewers, our listeners, uh, what, what is your history with Trek? Yeah, I mean, I kind of started w with TOS as a child growing up and just watching it on syndication, just television and watching the films. But I never really understood what Trek Star Trek really was back then, other than uh, giant cats and uh Kirk just punching aliens. And I was like, wow, this show is crazy. But um, once I started watching TNG, I really started to understand like the meaning of the shows and just everything what the show was about. And that's when I really, so TNG is kind of the one that I really started to fall in love with Trek. And, but I actually grew up with TOS and I just loved all of the, the TOS crew and the films and everything like that. And, and then I, after next generation, it just kind of watched everything you know ds9 and voyager and just, i mean i just, just go through and just just watch everything just to make sure I, i'm just totally into it at this point now so and that was kind of my star trek background you know so uh, whenever and, i have a question i can ask him he knows I, I was really, <laughs> we were but now joking. there's like well it's like there's so much try and i don't know how you all do it it's amazing but it's like you know now there's just so much trek out there that i I can't, I can't hold it in my memory banks anymore. It's just like, I, that's I just, why we have Hawk. I know. And Hawk, you were so impressive. Like every time something comes up, it's just Hawk's just on it. And I was just like, wow, I, you were like memory alpha. <laughs> it's, it's amazing. No, but I mean, you're all like that. It's just really cool. And it's like, but I'm kind of like more like in that, that TOS TNG since I spent so much of my life in that era, but yeah, there's just so much Trek now, which is really hard to keep up. So I try, I try my best. <laughs> But, but yeah, it's, uh, and then, um, coming, coming to work on the show, uh, I, j I just, I mean, I don't think, uh, anyone knew how much I love Trek. I, I think they just knew <laughs> that I worked on it. Well, it was really funny. I just got like super lucky, you know, even getting picked for this show because I know, you know, Wes had his, his AE that was, you know, busy at the time and I kind of went down the network, um, you know, are you free for Star Trek? And it actually went to a, a friend of mine who uh, is also, uh, you know, an AE who loves Star Trek. And he was on another show and he was like, I can't take it, but I know who somebody, I know somebody who would love this job. <laughs> and then he contacted me and it was really funny because they said, oh, yeah, the editor is uh, Wes Winton. And I was like, wait, Wes, ah. we worked together before. <laughs> so, <laughs> And, it, and, it, and you know what, Wes, it was really funny that uh, I, I was always thinking around that time when they called me, I was like, God, I wonder what Wes has been up to. I haven't chatted with him in a while. <laughs> and it, was just, it was just really great. So it just kind of word went back. And, you know, I think I, I uh, you know, they kind of like, um, they knew I had like a VFX background because I worked on The Good Place beforehand. And that was a pretty heavy VFX show. So they were like, this is a very VFX heavy show. And I was like, oh, I'm all, oh good. Okay, we got it. And uh, yeah, and it was fine. And then. It, they, apparently they liked me and I got the job and I was like really happy. And I owe a lot of people a lot <laughs> for me being on this show. Eric, Eric just like lost his mind because he I knew. loves the good place. It's my favorite knew. show. Yeah. It's my favorite yeah. show. So. Yeah. It's a fun yeah. show. Yeah. I when Matt told show. me that, we were texting, Matt told me that he worked on The Good Place. I was like, oh my God, Eric loves that show. <laughs> love Karen loves that show. <laughs> Karen watched it without me and I got mad. So then I went and binged it by myself. <laughs> and oh. of course, Eugene Cordero is yes. a connection. Yeah, yeah, very much so. Yeah, no, that's awesome. Oh man, and and just on top of all that, I I do see an enterprise in your background. Is that the if it's blurry a little bit? So I'm gonna guess is that the refit or is that the Kelvin? No, this is the this is the uh, the the this is this is Strange New World Strange. Enterprise. Well, well, I guess TOS Enterprise. TOS it's enterprise. TOS. It's TOS nice. Enterprise. Um, but uh, yeah, and um, yeah, the, you have the candle like, back there. I got you. Uh, it, it is, it's, it's out of frame. This was my, this was a gift from Wes. Oh, <laughs> it's that's my, amazing. Oh, oh, it's my Andorian, uh, uh, Vulcan, uh, salute. That's amazing. We, ha we have a big love for Hammer, so I had to get that. Mm. Yeah. 
Yep. Yep. A lot of a lot of folks in our collective love Hemmer as well. Um let's get right into this one, guys. Wes, uh obviously let's let's talk tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow, right? First one that you guys did this season. Um so just a day in the life of you two. When you get the tape, what is an episode like for you? What what gets into the final cut and and you know what's the difference of what you guys get and when we see it when we finally stream it on Paramount Plus? Well, the, the, it's great on this show because the writers are so amazing. And so it's it's really found on the page. And uh, with Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow, it's really, you just really look and see like what the genre is going to be and really ground it in Trek. So Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow for me was a love romance and also like a procedural Yeah. Uh, for like most shows. So I really stuck to that really like kept the tempo of that and uh really wanted to build like the the character and romance between the two um because anyone that knows you know trek kind of knows that that's going nowhere but you really wanted to like uh really ground what um laon is feeling uh so in that one it was really fun to do uh like car chases and explosions and you know <laughs> uh really have like an emotion like one of the best scenes uh was when they don't say anything to each other and they're sharing a hotel room with each other like you know you really get a lot out of you know not saying anything in those things so um for me it was really fun that it was uh off the off the ship and on world and uh out in the streets and uh just just really looking at uh making it trick but also knowing that it's like a it's its own little episode that doesn't have to be like all the others yeah yeah fair matt oh so it's it's very noisy it was a very noisy background too on the streets <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot it's it's very it's 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 really something uh when you're doing a show and they're on location they're like outside with all like the street noise and anything and we had a lot of street noise for that episode and it was just amazing the amount the the work that you know uh our sound team uh did on this show and now you know why they got nominated for an emmy because yes. they, they really do amazing work you listen to that episode and when we were cutting it it was just incredibly noisy and we were just like wow how are they going to do this and they sure enough did it when we went to the mix stage for that episode it was it was incredible like we couldn't believe it yeah, um, we would we would get footage that was uh, snowy one day and the next day sunny. Oh, and, and the weather, yeah. and the weather. <laughs> so it was a lot of like juggling. You know, what is what is the weather going on here? <laughs> we don't know. <laughs> what happens? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. So, so I guess I I want to I kind of like the second part of that question is like so obviously Wes, you're like the main editor. Matt's the assistant editor. Who who does what? Like. What does like so Matt like? What do you do to get it to Wes, and then Wes like? What do you take from Matt, and you know what? What's kind of like your guys' process? Well, I'll let Matt start since it starts oh, with wait. him. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. So basically, what happens is, uh, you know, they shoot all the footage um, on the shoot day, and the very next morning, we get all the footage, or we call them dailies, and uh, we get the dailies. They get processed at a daily house which kind of gets down res uh, to what we call the offline. And it's basically just taking the 4K and turning it into HD so that we can work with it easily. And then it just kind of comes to me. Um, fortunately, a lot of shows, they kind of sync sound for you, which is great. There are some shows that don't do sound syncing and the AEs have to sync sound and it's it takes a, a bit. <laughs> um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, we have a really great dailies house and uh, we get all the footage, it's all ready to rock and roll. And then uh, I kind of prep the bins, uh, get the projects prepped and ready to go and uh, get all the scene bins uh, loaded up and for Wes. So basically, so it just makes like Wes's, you know, so Wes can basically get editing it like as, as fast as he can. Um, uh, so then that's pretty much what I do, just kind of get that prep it. And uh, assistant editors have this really cool uh, feature in the Avid, um, it's called scripting and that's one of the things that we do a lot uh in the prep process is it's, it's actually a really cool feature some editors use it some editors don't use it um but basically it's a digital script uh we basically have the script in almost like this pdf form and what we do is we put dots next to all the lines in the script and all those dots are all the moments that that actor says that line 
Oh, and nice. when you look at it, it actually looks like a, a script from Scripty. You know, it's got like the lines. It's got like the lines like going down the script, and it's got like the squigglies like saying, "Oh, well, this person says this line here, but they're not on camera." And it's really great. Um, it's super fast to just find a line that you need, especially like when you're working with producers, because a lot of producers uh, say, "You know, do we have another line that has a little bit of this level of energy?" Um, and uh, or this emotion and you could just instantly just click on those lines and it just brings it up right away. So it's incredibly fast and it's, it's, it's really great to work with. Um, so yeah, and that's what I do. And once all that's prepped, uh, which is usually takes like the first quarter of a day, uh, it gets shipped off to Wes and, uh, or the editor and then, uh, they can start cutting. Now I pass it along to Wes. <laughs> yeah. So when they're filming, we are just like one day behind them. So, I try to get everything edited that they did the day before because sometimes, you know, they ask from set, like, did we get everything? Cause we need to move on. And like, you know, we'll know if, if something went wrong or whatever. So we're usually a day behind and they shoot anywhere from eight to 16 hours worth of footage. And I usually watch every single thing and go through and start putting together the scenes. Um, and, uh, it is a fast pace and we get an editor's cut. So uh, we're a day behind them. So when they're done, we're done about like, they give us a few more days because we have a lot of sound work to do, but we're usually like done like two or three days after they're done filming and we get to present our editor's cut. And in the editor's cut, all the words, all the scenes, everything uh, is in there. Um, everything's included. And then, uh, we get to have our say of what, what we want to do and then it goes on to the director and we work for five days with the director and uh, they get to have their say of what they want and then uh, it goes into with uh, producers and we're with them for quite a while and then uh, studio network gets their 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 say so it just becomes a collaboration down the line with everybody writers producers um, studio heads and uh, once we get a lock um, it is funny for us because we don't really see any of the visual effects yet. We have previs, we have, you know, <laughs> like line squiggles, you know, we have the sound effect of, of an explosion, but like, we don't see it. <laughs> so, so, uh, depending on how long the, the effects takes, it's usually, I don't see the effects until we're on the mix stage, like months later. Yeah. Um, and so it's always really fun to be on the sound stage and like, see like, oh, that's, you know, we had the right timing we had the right whatever but like now it's like now it all comes together that's awesome um i remember from talking with with chad rebella i guess i want to ask you this as well he said that working you know on and just dis on discovery and then like going from the editing booth and working with the director it's always been like a really great collaborative experience and i'm just wondering if it's kind of like that same kind of like almost like family dynamic on strange new worlds uh, on Strange New Worlds, it's very interesting because we were born in the pandemic. Yeah, yeah. So mm -hmm. everything that I've done has been exactly like this. I, 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 no one's been in the room, um, but on Disco, they were in the room. And it's like, what it is, it is very collaborative. We're there all day. Um, it is very fun to like, you know, you'll edit the scene one way, the way that I want it. And then you'll have a director be like, oh no, I was looking at it like this whole direction. And you're like, oh, okay, you know, you go that way. So the, the collaborative process is, is great. And on Strange New Worlds, we're just on the computer all day with everybody. And, you know, I can live edit. They see everything that I'm doing. Oh, that's awesome. And so um, sometimes they just, you know, rip off some notes and sometimes they sit and watch me tinker. But um, the, the collaboration process on Strange New Worlds is just, great like the the directors know what they want the producers like they are they give me a lot of creative room and uh i don't know it's been a it's been a really great experience awesome so you guys did three episodes and they're all ridiculously different so 203 <laughs> is a location to shoot uh 206 is totally set on the ship and it's a very you know horror based wow. episode uh and 209 is the freaking musical <laughs> <laughs> so obviously for 209 like the music is the key factor but what are some other key differences in editing these three types of episodes 
Uh, well, in starting any of these, I think the best part of Strange New Worlds is that like every single week you have no idea what you're going to get. <laughs> and I, sometimes I wish they didn't even make trailers for them. So you just sit down and like Eric. be surprised. <laughs> I don't watch the trailers at yeah. all. <laughs> oh, that's good. That's yeah. that's fun. Um, so uh, with it is just you always just know it's Trek. Keep it Trek. Keep it grounded. Um, but you get to go off in these wonderful genres and just go a totally like left turn. So going from, you know, procedural romance into uh, a, a character uh, study with a horror that's like a horror. Um, just using, using you know, the editing styles and the things that like, you know, the scary sounds and the, the slow movements and all that kind of stuff and just really keep it horror and keep it the genre that you're going for but um, still keeping the the lightheartedness and like the um, character of Trek um, for the horror one. Then going into the musical, I had never cut a musical before. Oh. And so I was terrified when I got it. And, not a lot uh, of editors could say that they have, right? I, it's not, yeah, it's not something that's, uh, I don't know. Yeah, it had no history of it. So I was like, all right. I was so excited we got that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It was kind of like a thing where we were, uh, the editors were, well, it, we were like with the other teams were like, oh, who's going to get the, who's going to get the musical? Who's going to get the musical? And, it, and then we found out we got it. And I know like the other team was like, oh, I wanted the musical. And I was like, oh, yes, we got it. It's like, who's getting the crossover? Who's getting this? And it was just, but I was really excited to get that because I came from a musical theater background. So I was like. I was like, God, yes. I hope I get it. I hope I get it. <laughs> How many people like, does he need? <laughs> uh, but with the, with the musical one, I knew that it was going to be a hot button one. I knew that Trick had never done it before. I, I, I just, I knew that there's going to be a lot of eyes on it. And I knew that it was going to be rewatched many times. So um, I sat with the footage. I sat with the songs. I sat with all the footage and I just really went through and made sure that the, the visuals just really brought out all the emotion in the characters and where they were at in the storyline and really kept the cutting pattern uh, close to like what the song was. And uh, so throughout the whole episode, all the songs are very different. So now when you watch it, like the cutting pattern is very different for each song, but the cutting pattern was always to serve the character and where they were at. And uh, I watched some musicals, like newer musicals are very cutty. And I was like really trying to stay away from that because for me, Trek is like big, it's wide, it's, you know, fantastical. So I really leaned into the wides for the musical to like just really sh show our great sets and uh, and then go in close when it was like time for the emotion for that character and where they were at. Was there any particular musical you use kind of as a frame of reference or any favorites? There really isn't. I don't have I don't have a huge uh, uh, backlog of musicals or at all, really. Um, and it's and it's kind of weird too because all the songs are so different as well. It's like it's like you got songs that are very like Rodgers and Hammerstein, and you have like you know, yeah. songs that are kind of like in the Heights, and you know, it's like yeah, it's. Uh, all the songs were so different, which was really great about that episode. But I can say I will never unhear these songs. They keep me up at night still. <laughs> <laughs> and I love the all of them, but they are ingrained. That's yeah. One of the one of the greatest joys about working on uh, episode nine was that when we were cutting it and just kind of playing these songs constantly, it's my son heard this so much you would just hear him in the background singing and we had the split so it's like we had like the vocals and we had the instrumental on two different tracks so if i wanted to see if something was like too hot or not i would just like mute the vocals and i would just have the instrumental so i would just play the instrumental and i'm playing it and i hear my like five-year-old at the time just kind of just singing all just kind of matching with like celia or so and i was like oh my gosh this is just so it's just so <laughs> amazing i love it and then yeah. I had to, and then I had to pull him off to the side, and I was like, "Okay, you can't sing these songs in public." <laughs> <laughs> I honestly oh, yeah. had the same talk with my daughter because we saw it early, and she, mm. we wa we've watched it every single day since we got the screen. Same every single oh, day, wow. multiple same. times, some some days, and she just constantly sings it all the time. Oh. It's amazing. They're and my, incredibly catchy. Yeah. And it's and it's amazing how fast they put the I mean, I don't know the exa the exact time they put these songs together, but it it happened it was, quickly. It was quick. It was very very quick. Yesterday um, alone, 
my daughter and I went through the album twice, blasting oh, and singing together in the car. So oh, yes. I mean, oh, yeah. that's just how catchy it is. And the amount of times yesterday that I was just like, hail the Klingons, oh, hurrah. <laughs> <laughs> just it's, had to. It's perfect. Yeah. Yeah. It's so perfect. Um, I know we've gotten just into the musical now, but Matt, was there anything that you wanted to add kind of like uh, to that, to that, like, you know, key differences editing these. Oh, kind of yeah. Things. You know, what's really funny is because we also, um, w we were also in season one and we did episodes for Memento Mori. We did episode six, uh, lift us suffering cannot reach and, um, uh, episode nine, all those that wander. And it's really funny because season one, we had very dark episodes. I think Weston, we had, we had like the darkest episodes of the season. <laughs> yeah, I think. We, yeah. yeah, we, we had to say goodbye to Hammer. It was the worst. Oh yeah. That was. That was really funny. That was that. Well, I mean, it's not funny that we lost Hammer, but it was, it was a funny situation. Like we, I remember us getting the scripts and I was like, I'm just going to, I'm going to read this tomorrow or I'm going to read this over the weekend or something. And I remember Wes texted me. He's like, you're not going to like this episode. <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> no, <laughs> I already know what's going to happen, but yeah. yeah, no, but, uh, yeah, it's, it, it's really, it was really fun. I mean, I can't, speak on much of like the editing part of it uh but just just like the footage that we got and just everything just putting it together yeah it was really nice season two because just they were all different and uh, um and, you know season one we had you know we had all the darker episodes which was really fun i think we just kind of got in this groove of like cutting these like really grim episodes or these episodes with like these gut punches at the end uh and it was really nice you know for season two because we just had such a, a a wide range of episodes that we could mess around with it was really great that's awesome nice uh Hawk. so i'm gonna take a guess and say that there's probably some misconceptions about what it is exactly you guys do because it's so much more than just editing the video and finding right takes and that if there was one thing each of you would want folks to know about what you do uh what would that be um well it's not a lot of like uh i'll use my mom as an example she has no idea what editing is and she's like well, well they're done filming that's done right and it's like oh, no <laughs> So uh, for me, it's really, uh, you get the script, um, you get tone meetings, you get to see everyone's performance, but then it's really, you know, sitting in the room alone with the footage and like really like feeling the emotion of the characters of the scene and just tinkering and tinkering and, you know, using this cut, using that cut and you slowly put it together. And so it usually takes, you know, it could take you, I don't know, an hour to do a scene or 16 days to do a scene just until you get it right. So it's a lot of uh, tedious, uh, just, I don't know, feeling your gut about what you really are trying to get the audience to feel and just keep messing with it until you you feel like you've, you've hit it. Um, but a lot, a lot of people don't realize like the, the amount of footage and the amount of, uh, uh, I don't know, stress, stress that we have to like, uh, to, to make these scenes. Cause you know, one scene that goes by and it's only 15 seconds or a minute, they shot it for three days, you know? So you, you really got to go through all the footage and, 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 uh, deliver what, you know, the director and the writers and everyone's looking for. Can I just yeah, follow up? Oh, sorry, Hawk, go ahead. No, you go ahead. Oh, so I was going to say, yeah, because you be, could be going through dozens of takes of just like a one scene and that somebody checking their communicator. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I, Matt would probably know better like the, the ratio of, you know, what makes it to screen and, and what they shot, but um, our show shoots a lot. <laughs> yeah. Especially when we're on the bridge too, because, you know, mm -hmm. it's a, it's a big bridge and we got a lot of different setups for it. Uh, when we shoot it, it's pretty, it's pretty wild. I think that's the most, when we have multiple cameras rolling uh, on the show is when we're on the bridge. Cause there's always cameras just like, ready on somebody it's like we're we're on uhura we're ready to go or we're on spock or we're on we have like we have like four close-ups on like four different uh characters and then then we got to do the whole thing again where now we we have like a wide and uh to like two two more shots we're a little bit more closer in it's just like there's so many different setups for especially on the bridge so it's pretty wild there's a definitely a lot of footage it's almost like shooting like a courtroom scene you know just because there's just so much everywhere and you got and you and you got the front of the ship too so you got like the screen so it's it's 
it's it's pretty wild um yeah yeah it's a lot to and then uh for a vfx and stuff like that we get pre and we know like uh a, a rough estimate of like you know how many we can use or how many we can get and stuff and so uh roughing those in and matthew always does a great job doing sound effects for me for you know i was gonna our, ask about our, that yeah. our, our, our little paper you know like the ship needs to go over here and whatever and uh matthew is great <laughs> with sound effects and all the sound effects are our temp um for us for like the whole um cutting sessions um and then it goes off to um our great sound team and they usually emulate a lot of great stuff that matthew comes up with yeah, it's it's really cool. And it's really funny, like when we're doing like temp sounds, you know, every every team kind of has their own temp sounds that they like using. I know one team likes to use a lot of like TNG sound effects mixed with like TOS, which is really fun. Um, when I jumped on the show, it was really funny. Uh, this is my first episode was Memento Mori. And I remember the first day we got footage in, it was like easy dailies. It was like an easy scene. I think it was like when Hemmer and Uhura are walking down the, the corridor, just chatting and stuff. I was like, oh, this is really nice. Second day of my first job on Star Trek, the ship is just getting blown. The bridge is getting blown up. There's just <laughs> stuff going on everywhere. And <laughs> so I was like, oh, wow, we're really in it now. So it's like just trying to find like sound effects for that. And I remember like, what am I going to use for this? And I remember we had all the masters for uh, Discovery, and uh, I kind of like harvested a lot of Discovery season two, you know, because I was like, well, we're kind of in that era. So like, we're like just a few months away from season two. So maybe we can grab some of these and this sounds pretty good. So I laid a lot of those in. And then um, once it went to sound, sound had their own uh, sounds that they made for just specifically for strange new worlds and they kind of like wipe those and but they kind of leave them as a guide for some stuff and then they just kind of lay in their stuff which which sounds really impressive i mean just really amazing the stuff that they come up with uh which is really good yeah um, we sit we sit with these shows for months and it's for us it's it's us to sell the cut before it gets finalized so we sit with temp music we sit with temp, uh, sound effects and uh you know uh, and it's really it's really funny in like the evolution of like on online with like strange new worlds like where we started because you know we didn't have any music that we could really pull from so a lot of the temp music was just like from you know a lot of like big soundtracks like movie soundtracks and stuff like that you know it's like you know alex alex kurtzman is like really in like he has a real great ear for soundtracks and he that actually has shock a, me that yeah he has a, a great yeah. list of like really really good soundtracks that we can kind of pull from uh to use and then uh what happened was is like after you know once once nami came in and she just did her brilliance on the show and just now we have an actual score now for season two is a little different now we're kind of pulling all of nami's um season one scores and now we're temping them in so it's now it's like less like movie movie soundtracks and movie scores and stuff like that and now it's just all of her music um which is really great because you know you you hear a lot of those like d those repeated themes like for like uhura you know uhura has got like her theme which is really nice that we can kind of use and then you'll hear it again in the final but it's just it's it's different it's like it's the same theme but you know at nami's adding like a little bit more to it this kind of like complementing the scene and it's just really awesome so yeah, but temp temp sounds and temp music is really fun, and and Wes has an amazing uh, ear for uh, temp music because I because Wes put a lot of the temp music in, uh, and it's just great. I was, oh, it's a, it's always fun every time I would like watch one of his scenes when he was done. Uh, I was like, oh, this is a great choice of music. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> yeah, he's always like, what is that? I need that. Yeah. Uh, I know I know it's not your guys' episode, but on our pod last night, we just uh I guess for people on Monday, on Thursday, uh we just Nami score for Oh, for she's brilliant. Incredible. I mean, that might have been one of her best episodes. It yeah, she's just, phenomenal. Uh, yeah, yeah, what she brings yeah. to the table is just uh it's yeah. Yeah. amazing. Yeah, she's become a very good friend of the show and we okay. just cannot we cannot stop singing her praises. Not because we're friends, because she is <laughs> Just we were amazing. We were singing the praises way before we knew. Way her. before you <laughs> we were. Yeah. 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 The yeah. first episode of Prodigy, Prodigy before yeah. too. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. I, someone on the stage asked her once, like, "How do you do it?" And she just immediately answered, "She's like, I don't sleep." <laughs> <laughs> that's, 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 a fact. that's very true. Yeah. And yeah. Well, she's I, great. I just I, I just wanted to follow up real quick on something that you you were saying because like you guys get this crazy amount of footage. And I think you mentioned earlier, you know, it's like some like, did you say six to eight or like 16 to 18 hours? Like, I have to imagine oh, yeah. you have like ridiculously long nights. Like, do you guys sleep? 
uh yes we do <laughs> but yeah we'll we're it's very it's very easy for us to pull 16 to 18 hour days just to just to slug through and uh they come in peaks and valleys you know you, when you're doing dailies it'll take a lot and then once you get your cut in a good a good spot you don't have as long a days right but um as an editor, I feel like I just need to watch every little bit of film that is done. And there's so many little happy things that you find, you know, before the take, after the take um, that I use. So um, watching all of it is very important for me before I even start crafting anything. So, but yeah, the hours are immense and I try to stand as much as possible, <laughs> but it, I, I always, uh, and then I'll, every show I work on, I always call us the mole people because we're in a small <laughs> office and we're just in there all day, like looking at the screens and uh, the, the hours that it takes to, cr to create these shows is, is immense. Yeah. Yeah. I, I can't imagine how much footage you have for Lost in Translation because the perspectives that you get from Uhura and Ramon as they're going through all the hallucinations is incredible and <laughs> then you get the normal you know the the what the viewer nor will normally see um so like what kind of editing techniques were used to craft this sense of unreality or like uneasiness that both uhura and ramon were going through when they were communicating with the aliens uh heavily relied on sound effects for those moments and really connected it, the, the scene that you're talking about when they both hear it uh, before he freaks out uh just really letting know like the the actors connect with their eyes that you that they know that something is going on and that everyone else knows it's going on but the sound effects really really uh put that together with how you know weird the sound was that they were hearing and uh for me all those kinds of scenes uh for scary scenes and whatever it's always in the actor's eyes and so for those scenes i was just really making sure that like you could see that they were connecting on with that uh, you, you talk about connections and we all sort of talk about how we've all really connected to the musical episode. I'm going back to that <laughs> because like, like everyone here, we're all theater kids on this, uh, yeah, on this all, podcast. Yeah. So we all sort of grew up with musicals, if not on stage in, in the theater world as well. And it's crazy that you say that you're not a fan of musicals or you haven't really watched them in the past because when you go through the different songs and they are di very stylistically different, but they also seem to be shot differently so they all evoke sort of a different era of movie musical and stage musical you like the first Uhur, um, una song is very rogers and hammerstein like we said earlier it feels right. like oklahoma when you're watching it, it's sort of cut oh, like absolutely it. and then you get to like um chapel's uh scene later and it is very in the heights it's it's shot like it, it it's it, it's quick cuts it, I didn't it looks think about in the heights watching that that's a great example it, though it, yeah. it it really felt like uh 89,000 or yeah uh, it, yeah yep. the, the big number at the end of act 1 um can you give us some insight in how you go through these different styles but you're also keeping it in star trek and then like are there any challenges i i can imagine that there are a million different takes for these just from the coverage there and is. stuff uh Every scene I start with, uh, this is Trek. This is in the Trek world and people that love Star Trek are going to watch this episode. So I start there. And then we had a great director on this, uh, Dermot Downs. And he really did his homework for uh, how musicals are shot and how he wanted them. And it takes a lot longer to shoot wide on our show. And they really took the time to go wide. And I feel like uh, his directing choices really guided um, all the musical numbers of like, you know, the styles that I was getting. So um, for me, when I would start each one, I would just listen to the song over and over and over. And then I would watch the footage without the music. Uh, I'd actually click off their track and, and find that moment of the character and how they looked and where they were at and the, the staging. And so for me, all of the music all the way through was always staging. Like, where is the character? Where are they in the frame? Where are they emotionally in the song? Um, and his direction was phenomenal. And so I felt like I was, I was able to find all of those moments. So, um, yeah, like when it got to the chapel scene, like that was just really fun. And it's such a fun set in there. And they had so many extras that like, it just really called to have like energy and having everybody jump up and down and have everybody smiling. And so going through all the footage and just looking for those moments to craft that. Um, so for me, it really the editing style just kind of came from 
what I wanted to see and how I wanted to see it in, in Trek. And all of the great footage came from uh, the director, Dermot. Yeah, that was a great, that was a great number in with Chapel Song. Everyone was having fun, except yeah. Spock. <laughs> That's right, yeah. Spock is a sad boy. Yeah, he was very sad. He's the ex. So. <laughs> You're right. But it, it was really fun having, a, you know, kind of a different editing style for all of it because it is a long episode and there are lots of songs. So the repetition of that I, I w- would get boring. So I really liked, you know, changing it up. Those, yeah, those, it was, I love that episode <laughs> so much, so much. It's so much. It's funny because I'm, I'm in a show right now. I'm in a, I'm, I'm in a stage show and. They they found out that there's a Star Trek musical. I was like, we're having a screening of this. We are going to watch it together. I'm going to make you all Star Trek fans. You're going to watch this whole series. It's so fun. Like I love it. Yeah, I, it's fun. I, there's I, a lot I of people that have. Oh no, go ahead. Go, go ahead. ahead. There's a lot of people that have never seen Trek before that are watching because it is a musical. So I think that's really exciting. Yeah. No, that's that. I didn't think about that. Like how many how many fans that like maybe it has brought in just because the word musical right like mm-hmm. the poster is like great advertising oh for that gosh alone, yeah. i right? i want that poster yes me too. <laughs> I, want that. Yeah. I just two things i want i want that poster and i want the soundtrack on vinyl yes i, on, I uh, hope they uh, do a vinyl i do too hopefully <laughs> that listening. would just be yeah. <laughs> I, I i know a guy where i can get you guys posters uh <laughs> yeah. yeah that's gonna come out <laughs> yeah no nah, it's fine i haven't gotten yelled at yet not gonna <laughs> I just love how episode nine, the musical episode, was probably the hardest secret I've ever kept in my life. <laughs> <laughs> it was just, and I, I was just like, and I was getting like, even other shows, you know, they were like, you know, I remember like when the boys like did like, there were, there was like, they had like a little musical section. But when I saw that on Twitter, I thought that they were doing a musical before us. And I was getting like, no, I want this first. <laughs> and then I found out it was just a scene. And not only that, it was like a cover of a song. And I was like, mm-hmm. nice. First off, it's one scene and it's not an original. We have like 10 originals, like our episodes and absolute <laughs> musical number. Yeah, but it was like, but there was all these things where it was like, you know, I wanted this show to be super, super special for like the audience. And it was just like, I was getting really nervous because I was thinking, oh gosh, I hope like, I hope this never leaks because as I want people to be surprised and it's like, I hope like, uh, you know, nobody like kind of tips the hat that this is going to be a musical episode or anything, but you know, it did a really good job. Like, uh, just keep, I was really surprised from when we were done locking this episode and taking it to the mix stage and everything, just finalizing it, like how long it went without any leaks saying that it was a musical. It was just incredible. Um, showed the amount of, uh, how amazing people are on our show for keeping mm-hmm. good at keeping secrets. <laughs> yeah. Once the season started, there were rumors mm-hmm. like, cause I think all the episode titles got released, but I don't oh. know like how many people necessarily bought it because there was still a good amount. Like I, I would say a very good amount of shock at Comic-Con when they released the trailer for it. And it was just like, okay, shit, like this is really happening. Oh, and did that... it, was a trailer at Comic-Con? They, they yeah. showed the trailer for it yeah. at oh, Comic-Con wow. before showing uh, the, those old scientists. Yeah, and Ooh. they released the posters at Comic-Con and the fire marshal had to come in because people were trying <laughs> to get it. <laughs> <laughs> I was just about to say, everyone probably went bananas. <laughs> That's fun. I didn't know that. That's awesome. Given like how unique a job the film editing is i was wondering was there a particular editor or any movie or tv show that you guys can remember which made you first consider pursuing it as a career um i think the first thing i ever saw that uh taught me that i was like okay wait i want to work in this it was a uh, peewee's big adventure when i was young oh, yeah and I saw that in the theater and uh <laughs> even still it's like one of those most creative movies from beginning to end and so that was what really like pulled me in and uh i remember when i was younger i saw captain eo at disneyland <laughs> yeah and i was obsessed with it and i remember you know uh getting a hold of who made it and didn't know that coppola made it didn't know who that was when i was younger but uh walter merch was the editor of that and he also did uh return to oz which I was obsessed with when I was younger. 
Nice. Yeah. <laughs> so was, those those hopeless. darker, weirder sci-fi things really like I wanted to to learn more, and that's where I learned like what, what editing was through Walter Murch. No better teacher, like everything he did in the oh, 70s. Yeah. With yeah. yeah. So uh, that's what got me in when I was I was younger. So uh, it wasn't until I was in high school, a little older, that I got a hold of like the tools to actually edit. And I was was hooked. Nice. That's awesome. Hmm. Yeah, I think mine's easy. Uh, you know, my Yaya, which is your grandmother in Greek, uh, she... All she did was tape stuff mm. off of HBO, Showtime, Cinemax, whatever, movie channel, everything. She had like one of the first recording VHS players. Um, and, you know, growing up, I just watched everything she just had. She had, I'm not kidding. She had like 3,000 plus VHS tapes, six hour Whoa. recording, wow. just decorated with their house. Kind of like this board game wall behind me, but like much, <laughs> much bigger. Um, but yeah, it was just my sister and I just watched movies and like I said, I come from a theater background. My parents are actors and, you know, so entertainment is kind of like in our blood and just watching, uh, uh, watching so many hundreds of films, you know, you just kind of get this real idea of pacing and rhythm for, for storytelling. And, uh, you know, what was really funny where the editing comes in is my, my Yaya would always, we would watch these shows, but she thought some stuff was inappropriate for children. So when she was recording these, she would hit pause and hit record when she knew where there was going to be like a oh. swear word, a <laughs> nude scene or something. And the best part was, is she couldn't 100% predict where they were. <laughs> so it would say they would just say something it would just be like uh i mean I, are we, am i allowed to swear on this oh, show yes you <laughs> are so yeah. like, we would like watch something I, I remember the first one i saw was rambo first blood and it's when like one of the cops like it strikes rambo with the nightstick and he goes down <laughs> and he's like what the fuck was that and as soon as he said that it just it cuts after <laughs> so he's just like so he's like what the fuck and then cut and then like you get the rainbow lines and now rambo's in the jungle or like he's in the forest somewhere <laughs> so like her, her her uh editing was slightly off but you know watching all those movies like that you know i was kind of like got this idea I was like oh my gosh you can actually like manipulate the story this way and stuff and this was really cool and this is like eight-year-old matt like watching this and like he was growing up you know just started to just you know just watch more films and which to me that's like the number one education you know for for a lot of stuff in filmmaking is just watch 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 as much as you can because it's just amazing you know all the stuff that you learn from uh just from all the styles and just how everything changes you know and even stuff like watching from the past you know you can still great get a lot of really great um you know techniques from the past and there's a lot of great techniques that are happening now and being discovered today so it's just watch everything you can and uh and that's kind of that's where i've always been i've always loved just you know editing and just cutting and um yeah there's just storytelling it's just really amazing so yeah, yeah. that's where it, it came from it, it came from thousands of movies that were slightly badly edited <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for and becoming it, an editor rather than a censor. <laughs> well, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> well, it's really funny because now I show my son movies that are the, the you shouldn't be showing a six year old, but I I cut them down. You're good. So I like <laughs> I've, I've, I've inherited what my Yaya did, which is crazy. Which is why I just showed my son last weekend. We, we watched Raiders. Of, no, we watched Temple of Doom, oh, and man. I cut like oh. twenty minutes out of Temple of Doom. Just lifted it, and you will not. It's almost like like when they would show this stuff on TV, and they would just cut all this stuff out on tv and it was like you wouldn't even know where the cut where the cuts were unless you knew the movie but if you didn't know the movie you're like oh yeah this is just a story my That's only I think, uh, my biggest like, backfire i'm worried that he's gonna go to a friend's house and watch this movie he's like <laughs> what did this happen in the movie <laughs> <laughs> well you can rewatch him with him when he's older and it'll be funny to be like yeah what? yeah because that's the thing it's like do? you forget it's like i forget all the time i watch movies like 10 years later i was like i don't remember this like, no, this is how it was so he'll forget oh hopefully. yeah nothing is different and was he doesn't grow up hating me was it the heart or oh like... yeah oh that was all gone yeah. it's really funny because i always let people I, I i let people like know that i i showed my son like a cut down of a movie and i said you get you get a bonus points if you know what got cut what got lifted from the movie anything I from the dinner a... scene 
Oh yeah, that's yeah. that yeah. got <laughs> that, yeah, got edited. It, and it's really funny because you know it's like subconsciously you know you keep doing that so much you know all these like edits and it's, it's training, especially <laughs> for us who are like in the middle of a strike and we're not working. It's like we gotta keep our training skills up, you know. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> No, but it's a, it's a lot of fun. I have a cut down of Conan the Barbarian. It's 15 minutes. <laughs> so there go. It's just oh, him wow. swinging the sword in it's the good, desert. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's basically that. That's funny. <laughs> the dance. <laughs> the dance. Oh. But no, yeah, it's wonderful. I, I love editing. Editing is just so great. And, uh, it, and it's a great, like, you know, assistant editors, there's like a big, uh, there's a very big difference uh, a lot of times between like the roles of the assistant editor and the editor. It's like the assistant editor is like very much like more of like a technical editor. So we do have some like, um, creative cutting that we that we can do um but the majority of it is like all technical editing it's all like you know making sure the footage is organized making sure everything it's kind of like it's like professional racing and it's like we're the pit team right. and you know wes is their driver and it's like we're both have very important roles in post-production and um but we can also edit if we need to like uh just do like a light assembly or like a light cut or something it's like you know the a lot of shows have the aes cut all the uh cut the recaps um so it's like there's a lot of times where like the aes can do um creative cutting but the majority of times it's like uh technical stuff uh so wes can have an easier time and just mainly focus on the creative and the storytelling and not get bogged down on on some kind of technical hiccup yeah, Ma- Ma- Matthew does my wonderful recaps. Of the show, <laughs> Thank you. that's all him. I was wondering about recaps. Like, do they tell you which scenes to include before an episode? Uh, it it kind of like the, like usually like I'll just like kind of cut like what I I kind of see what the episode is. And then I'm going to say, well, this is going to happen in the episode. So I'll put this from like a previous episode. But it's like it's a lot of times it's like you don't want to like tip your hat too much if something's happening because mm-hmm. I know, you know, when we did um uh equality of mercy uh were not when we did equality of mercy when we did tomorrow tomorrow and tomorrow uh we we had romulans in it uh and i i remember my first recap that i cut had a couple romulans from uh equality of mercy and then later realizing that yeah that's not a great idea because we don't want people to know that there's romulans mm-hmm. in this episode so and it's like and that's the thing with like a lot of recaps it's like you got to be careful because sometimes a recap will just give away the whole story right. mm-hmm. for you so and it's like uh our recaps are are very short uh which is really nice like i know like you know your typical like serial shows they have like one minute two minute recaps or something like that and our recaps are very just quick which is nice because it it's nice that they're that short because you don't want the show to feel like it's a serialized show. It's like we have characters that we're following, but it's like we don't want people to think, oh, I have to watch, you know, this, this, and this episode mm-hmm. to watch this episode. So I'm in, uh, I'm in the camp that I, I wish our show didn't have them and that there was no trailers, but I know that they have to. <laughs> I, but I, I, want, I want every show to be a, a I, surprise for everyone. Yes, I do yeah. too. Yeah. I don't want there to be recaps either. I completely agree. Yeah, I really, I I think they would serve better in that. You know, it's like we never had them like for TNG episodes back in the day. It was always just like. Unless it it was a to be continued and that was it. That's it. Mm -hmm. Uh, Other than that, you start the episode, you don't know what the heck's going to happen. And then. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's the fun part. I, I, I do, I do miss the blue uh titles i wish that i wish yeah. they would come back i, yeah. was, I was like lower decks. i would be i know and I, I'm, I'm happy lower decks times though but i was like yeah. man wouldn't that be fun if we had those like little blue titles but then actually it went away then i think about it i was like nah that wouldn't work <laughs> so, it makes it been, so hard to remember them. the titles when they're not on the screen it does it does yeah mc uh so what were your what was your favorite moment of season two can be something you worked on. It's kind of one of the advantages of having you guys on, you know, after the season <laughs> aired, just I'm actually, justifying. I, I'm actually run. happy that they've all aired. So we don't accidentally yeah. say yeah. something. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I was terrified before uh, we were going to come on for three and I was like, Oh, I can't say anything about anything. That can <laughs> um, favorite moments. Uh, for me, uh, Ahura, just as a character over the whole entire series, has been my favorite. Um, she's just so great. And her her journey through this whole season is, uh, I, I've liked shaping a lot of that. But my very favorite moment is uh, <laughs> the, the singing Klingons. 
And, uh, <laughs> yes. In, in that, uh, I thought, I, I, I don't know. I really like that Sam has a moment where he's really grooving to it. And that, that I think <laughs> over the whole series, that was my favorite shot of him just like really grooving to the, to the Klingons. You know, he went into the Starfleet database after that and was like, <laughs> Klingon K pop <laughs> would still be K pop, yeah, it would still be K pop, exactly. Yep, but uh, yeah, finding those little fun moments with the characters that like lets them, you know, have a have a personality on screen. Like, I really love her as little like shoulder dance and whatever that made it into the show and everything. So Just cute. those are the those are the fun moments for me that I see. I'm like, yes, I love that, and I'm so glad that it made it in. What about you, Matt? What was your favorite of season two? Oh boy! Oh, uh, I I think it's definitely that scene because it has three of my favorite characters in it. Uh, is in um, uh, episode six, uh, Lost in Translation, uh, where Kirk is giving his talk with Uhura about you know you know this job, you know you know brings you know has death like you know brings us death more than we need and basically it's like you know all you have to like you could fight back and i love i just love that whole that whole speech that he does and then we go and then we go to a video of hemmer who is my other favorite character <laughs> and that scene brings me i don't know why but i get very weepy eyed when i see that scene that scene is just so sad but i just love that moment uh with kirk um and that speech because it's just everything that kirk is and when we cut that scene i was like if this i remember telling you wes i was like if this if this doesn't make it in the season two promo <laughs> i we need to have a talk with somebody because this, this <laughs> it's like this is so great i was like somewhere i know it's gonna be like this job matches us up with death more than this fair and i was just like oh yeah it's totally gonna be in the trailer um <laughs> But yeah, no, I mean, it's hard not to like love just the musical because just that music is just so great. Um, it's like I I kind of judge like my favorite moments by like how many times I can watch them, like how many times I yeah. watch them. It's like, you know, I've seen the musical like not even after even when we weren't editing, like I would just I would just turn on my computer and just watch it or just play it in the background, just listen to it, you know, just, just randomly. So it's like, it's always like, what's your favorite? Well, how many times did I watch it? So it's definitely like the musical is always going to be like number one. Um, but yeah, that, that speech with, um, that speech with Kirk is just, just really great. I love, I love Paul. I think Paul plays Same. such a great, Same. he's such a great addition to this show. Mm -hmm. And, um, I'm so glad he's he's with us because he's just <laughs> phenomenal. and he has he has so much fun. He's so great on set or on, uh, and he he's great like behind the scenes too. He's just he's just really fun to work with too. I mean, um, he just has he he just has a great personality. Um, and there's actually a really funny story with Paul. Well, um, uh, you know, coming in on the show. You know, when we were doing Tomorrow, Tomorrow, and Tomorrow, oh, yeah. uh, the scene where we're in um, the square and they think they're in New York and stuff like that, <laughs> behind the camera, there's probably like tons of vampire diaries like fans <laughs> watching this and just seeing this. And then everyone's like taking photos and everything. And it's like, and then so what happened? That was a really weird day for me because. I was scripting, I got done, I finished scripting that scene and then I was done. Wes had the footage, he was cutting the scene and everything. And I was like, all right, let's just see what's on Twitter or whatever. And as soon as I jumped on Twitter, that scene that I was prepping was everywhere. <laughs> and it's like, how could it not be? It's two actors dressed in <laughs> Star Trek outfits. He's like, you know what these outfits are. You know, this is Star Trek. They're shooting something big. And then it was hilarious because no one really knew who Paul was playing. Mm -hmm. There were so many, mm -hmm. there were so many theories. It was like, we, I mean, of course there was tons of Kirks, uh, but there was a lot of other, like, uh, there was like, I, the, think, I think Decker so, was, a... yeah, yeah, yeah. who is the, who is the captain, the doomsday, uh, Decker. The yeah, Decker. is that Decker? Decker yeah. Decker, there was a yeah. lot of Deckers out there and there were like some admirals and stuff like that. And I was just like, well, other than being panicky, I was also laughing because I was like, ha ha, no, that's not it. <laughs> but I was also <laughs> panicky because I was like, oh my gosh, is our footage getting leaked or something like that yeah, i remember you, i remember you showed that to me and i was like i haven't even cut that scene yet i like, know it's already yeah 
And it was really wild. It was like like two hours later after all those posts, you know, CBS announces that Paul was, was Kirk. And it was to. like hinted they that, yeah, to. yeah. And I, th- I'm, I imagine they had that. They knew that was going to happen. I mean, when you when you have something like that, they're like, oh, yeah, they're, people are going to leak this and stuff. But it was, it was really wild uh, seeing that. And what was crazy is that, you know, I don't think Strange New Worlds even aired at that point. Or it was like, no, so. No, it hadn't. And just to kind of give people an idea of like where we were, I mean, we were well into season two, you know, while, and this show hasn't, hadn't even aired yet. So, um, so the timing was was just pretty wild, but yeah, that was fun. So, yeah. So I just love Paul and I know that was a really incredibly long answer to that question. (laughs) (laughs) I was joking. I was joking in uh, last night's episode that the reason all of Scotty's scenes were inside was so that they could make sure it didn't leak. (laughs) All right. Yeah. Yeah, that was a good surprise. It was a great surprise. Yeah, yeah. it was very fun. Yeah, because because it's hinted, and it's really fun because it was hinted in in the season finale of uh, ten, which yep. was great. Mm-hmm. So, and I wonder if they used the same voice actor, or if that was a temp like temp work that they got in Quality and Mercy, and then they liked his voice, so they brought him in. Like, I don't know, I don't know. Oh, I don't know the answer to that. Yeah, I yeah, don't know. No, that would I would be curious to know. Um. Yeah. No, we've been singing Paul's Paul Wesley's praises. I think every episode he was in this season, he's yeah. just been fantastic. Yeah, we were very fortunate to get all th- all three of his episodes, which is yeah. which is really exciting. Um, so yeah, really especially great. having the different versions of him as well. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah, the strength of our show really comes from how great our cast is and how they just really get along and really encourage each other, and like you can see it on screen because off screen it's the same. That's awesome. Um, does anybody else have anything before we wrap up? Good. MC, good. I I was just looking to see who voiced um Scotty in <laughs> I, I, uh, he Holly was... of Murphy. It's Ma- it's Matthew Wolf. Matthew Wolf. Matthew okay. Yeah, so All it right. is not the same guy. Ah, oh, boo. Sorry, I always have to find out the answer you to do, these things. You do. It's fine. It was me. <laughs> no. <laughs> it was me secretly. <laughs> Give me a Scotty, Matt, right now. I'm putting you on the spot. Uh, I can't. <laughs> but you know oh, what? But you, but you know what is funny about that is a lot of the, one of the, the many things that AEs do. We kind of have a grocery list of duties that we do. It's a lot. Uh, but one of the things is is a lot of times we do a lot of the temp videos on the show. <laughs> um, which is really great uh, for, I absolutely love that. But a lot of people are kind of like, I don't want to do it. But I'm just like, I know. <laughs> I, like, I never want to do it. I make him do it every time. <laughs> I if I hear I, myself in the cut, I laugh. I can't do it. I do, there's two people who absolutely love doing scratch ADR on our show. One is me and the other one is Dana, who is our second team editor. She loves doing uh, scratch uh, ADR. And what's great is you can actually hear her voice in the Blu-rays. If you own the Blu-rays, uh, we have the deleted scenes for um, to where suffering cannot reach um, the scene uh, that got lifted uh, um, where Kirk goes back uh, or not Kirk uh, Pike goes back and it kind of has the the origin story to th- those two characters. Um, she's the voice of the computer. Uh, and when I heard that, hmm. and when I heard that, I immediately texted her and I'm like, you're famous. <laughs> 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 But yeah, no, it's like we love do we love doing uh I love doing uh scratching. You love doing it's just, it. It's so fun. I remember like season one, I did all of Hemmer and it oh. was just great because it was just so great. And if Bruce is watching this and he hears this, I I'm sorry, Bruce. <laughs> Hate me. I love you and your character. <laughs> but no, it's a lot of fun. Just it's just really fun just doing that. My favorite part about doing it is like cause you you, you think uh oh this is how i'm just going to make this character sound and then once you get it back like when the actors get it like when they get it they really just it's just amazing when you get it back and you're like oh that's how that's how you would say it that's and and they probably just did it like once meanwhile like me i'm like practicing it like 30 times it's like it's like this no it's like this no it's like this 
my bad when they do, do it on Batman. The, oh yeah, it's, it's like this. <laughs> but when, <laughs> when they're on the mix stage, I'm sure they just do it in one take. So it's pretty amazing. But it's kind of fun. I know, like, I know enough that I'm not an actor, so I never want to do it. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of crazy. One time, I like on another show, and sorry, this is might be off on a different tangent. But it was like I love doing it so much. When I first started doing Scratch ADR, I would try to do it as close to the actor as possible and make it sound exactly like it. Because sometimes, like if you're watching like a scene and you just get like i don't know just somebody just says something like captain raise captain raise the shields or something like that and you're watching like that scene when it's just edited it kind of takes you out of the scene in a little bit you know because it's like oh this is weird now i got a little bumped by this even though it's temp i just got bumped so like when i first started doing this i tried to match like the cadence the frequency the tone of the actor as close as possible and on one feature film i was on like the producer was like Oh, that's great. Is that final? And they're like, no, that's Matt. <laughs> and I was like, no, in my head. That was like my first one of my first films I did. And then I was like, oh, that's awesome. Well, I'm gonna do this all the time. So then I was on one show where I did it almost exactly like the actor. And then on the mix stage, when they were doing like ADR with the actors, they missed an ADR line because I sounded too close to the actor and they oh, didn't no. get that line and they had to bring the actor back. <laughs> and I got like, I got a little zing for it. <laughs> and, then oh. afterwards, and then afterwards, and then afterwards I was like, okay, I'm going to make it sound like this character, but I'm going to kind of like overact it. I'm not going to try and sound exactly <laughs> like them just to avoid stuff like that again. Oh, so funny, if the man. actors are watching this and they ever hear like my temp ADR for them, I'm not making <laughs> fun of them or anything. I love you all. <laughs> it's just, Please don't hate me. <laughs> it's all part of the process. Yeah, it's Brilliant. all part of the process. <laughs> well, Wes, Matt, it has been an absolute pleasure. Listen, we're we're definitely like in a weird spot right now. I'm not going to ask you guys to talk about any projects you might be working on because, you know, the strikes and everything. We do hope that you're going to be back on season three because we'd love to talk to you again. Yeah. But yeah in the meantime um where where can people find you if you have any online presence and what are you doing uh, i guess i'll ask you what are you doing on your off time wes uh besides panicking uh <laughs> people, <laughs> uh people can find me at uh, wes witten on instagram it's kind of my only uh online presence uh but i just want to say i really support the the writer strike and the actor strike and i hope that they can get the deal that they want soon Yes, Agreed. absolutely. Uh, and uh, you can find me on Twitch. I, I, I stream board games when I'm not uh, working on shows. Uh, it's, as you can see, all these amazing board games behind us. And uh, you can find me on Twitch at the Silver Metal Tavern. And uh, yeah, we, we, just, we just nerd out and stuff. And, and just have, have fun great, guests. You have, a little, you have a great little Discord community too. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's yeah. just a lot of fun. So yeah. yeah, I'm coming up. I think like next week I'm coming up on three years of streaming uh, awesome. on Twitch, which is really fun. And yes. yeah, and one day I would love to meet Will Wheaton and just play board games with him and nerd <laughs> out and talk yeah. about Star Trek all day. <laughs> that would be awesome. Well, guys, it was an absolute pleasure, ladies and gentlemen. John Wesley Witten and Matthew Capacci. Thank you guys so so much. Um, that is going to do it for this one. So I will say for Wes, for Matt, for Hawk, for MC, for Eric, live long and prosper, Majram, and good night. Thanks for beaming into our podcast today. If you want to keep the hailing frequencies open, you can subscribe on Apple and Google Podcasts, YouTube, and Spotify. Like what you hear? Put in a good word with Starfleet and leave us a five-star review.